Rose at 10. The 2002 Emmy winner for New York's most outstanding newscast. Good evening. The clock is ticking loudly tonight, counting down to war with Saddam Hussein. The showdown with Iraq could be only hours away. During a summit today in the Azores, the president set tomorrow as the moment of truth for the world, trying to pressure the U.N. to vote for war, but the U.N. is not budging. Grant Rampey is standing by live now at the White House with late details on the situation. There have been developments all day long. Grant, what can you tell us? Well, just in the last hour or so, the president has arrived back here in Washington after a whirlwind trip to Europe. If the goal of his mission was to bring the world to the brink of a turning point moment in this crisis, mission accomplished. President Bush making it clear the diplomatic struggle to disarm Saddam Hussein is at an end. Tomorrow is a moment of truth for the world. The leaders of the U.S., Great Britain, Spain, and Portugal agree during a one-hour emergency summit meeting to make one last push for a U.N. war resolution. Iraq has until March 17th, less than 24 hours, to fully disarm. Without a credible ultimatum authorizing force in the event of non-compliance, then more discussion is just more delay. If it continues to look as if undecided countries aren't going to get on board or that France is going to follow through on its promised veto, the matter may not come to a vote at all. Bush and Blair say Saddam must not be given more time, certainly not the 30 days that France wants. Diplomatic efforts, they argue, have gotten nowhere. The UN must act. Because after 12 years of failing to disarm them, now is the time when we have to decide. Saddam Hussein has proven he is capable of any crime. We must not permit his crimes to reach across the world. The Iraqi dictator vows, if attacked, his nation will strike back anywhere there's land, sky, or water. Like Vice President Cheney warns time is critical because Saddam may in fact try to mount uh, terrorist attacks of various kinds against us, and we need to get on with the business of, of solving this problem and eliminating this threat. Word here is that short of a major shift from the U.S., from the U.N., rather, or Baghdad, neither of which is expected, the president will address the nation, possibly as soon as tomorrow night. He'll tell weapons inspectors and journalists to get out of Iraq. He'll likely tell Saddam to give in now or face military action. Live at the White House, Grant Rampey, back to you. All right, at this point, we want to go to Chuck Coppola, waiting now in Kuwait if we have him. We don't. All right, we'll push on ahead right now. If the U.S. does invade Baghdad, New Yorkers will witness unprecedented security. The NYPD has set up police, fire, and emergency teams specializing in counterterrorism. Jill Conway shows us what to expect. If the U.S. goes to war with Iraq, the NYPD will put Operation Atlas into effect. It's a massive security plan aimed at preventing the city from once again being a terrorist target. That means heightened security measures unlike anything we've seen before. There'll be more cops in the air and on the streets. Some you'll see, some you won't. These people are out there every day now. You want to appear and disappear and show up here and show up there and keep anybody that's uh, thinking of doing something stupid off guard. Authorities will again pay special attention to bridges and tunnels, beefing up checkpoints. Heavily armed officers with machine guns will be a familiar sight. All of them trained to respond to radiation, chemical, or biological attacks. Major transportation hubs, including Grand Central Station and Penn Station, will be routinely checked for explosives. Subway cars inspected by bomb-sniffing dogs. <laughs> The city anticipates frequent planned and unplanned anti-war demonstrations, like the one outside the UN last month. And this time, they'll be on alert for suicide bombers who may try to get near a large gathering. Houses of worship are also on the list. Cops will patrol local synagogues and mosques, as well as landmarks, financial institutions, and tourist attractions. The mayor says the city must be prepared for anything. He says New Yorkers should be glad the police are on top of things. That they should feel comforted when they see uh, additional police protection on the streets. It shouldn't be scary. Quite the contrary. It should give you some uh, thought that, hey, the professionals are out there trying to protect me. I can go about my business. And once again, authorities are calling on the public to keep an eye out for anything or anyone acting suspiciously. Jill Conway, WB11, News at 10. Senator Chuck Schumer today revealing details of a letter he wrote to President Bush urging the president to reimburse the city 
for the extra cost of Operation Atlas. Estimate that Operation Atlas, the NYPD's plan to keep bridges and tunnels and government buildings and houses of worship safe, will cost the city an average of $5 million a week. Senator Schumer is also calling on the Air Force to patrol the skies over New York City. For the second time in three days, hundreds of Yonkers residents have been evacuated from an apartment building because of a massive fire. The seven-alarm fire started in the basement of a building at Bronx River Road, quickly spreading to higher floors. Kathy Hobbs is live now in Yonkers with the latest. Kathy. Mary Yonkers Fire Department truly tested over these last couple of days. Today's fire, seven alarms. Firefighters from at least five different fire departments.